I do have a tripod. It's not for iPad. IP, um, iPads? iPad. Yeah. I got you. I, I need one too. Okay, so I'm going to start out with vitamin B. So whenever you start your facial, you need to let your client know that you're coming by touching them, okay? And I'm gonna do the decollete also. Spread your product, and then you can go into your cleanse. And make sure you do everything three times. Go ahead. Just you, at this point, just you know, shout them out. Yeah, okay. When you mask, um, do you still start on the decollete? Because I find that if I do the face, like I don't have no more mask. So I start on the face first, and then I'll do the decollete Whatever afterwards. Left. Whatever's left. If you should have some left. Yeah. But like at that point, you can't really like go back and scoop <laughs> more and just add. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you'll have enough. I'll show you a trick for that too, because you gotta wet your brush so your brush doesn't absorb the mask. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, dip your brush in the water and then go into your mask so then that way you don't, um, your brush doesn't absorb all the mask. So I start, I start and end at the decollete. It's up to you, but wherever you choose, stick with it. If you start at the forehead, stick with the forehead. If you start the decollete, stick with the decollete. Mm -hmm. When you do your towel, come around, never over. Always come around. And then when you do your barber wrap, hot dog on the chin, and then just wrap around the face. Either cover the eyes, or the mouth. Nose is never covered, not both. So I like to do the eyes and keep the mouth and the nose open. I learned or I've noticed with claustrophobic clients that they like their nose to not be covered or their mouth not to be covered. And then you can move the towel around. That helps get some of the product out. So you're not sitting there wiping the entire time. do my skin analysis right mm -hmm. so notice that my mag light is on and away from my client so you always want to turn it on away from the client when you do your skin analysis grab either a cotton or a, um sd white dip it in water open it once and twist I'm gonna let her know I'm coming. So I'm looking for 
any texture around the chin or anything. I can decide what type of pustules or papules she has. I'm looking at pore size and how far down on the cheek they go. So if it's right underneath the eye and I can see them, probably dry. They go further down and they're bigger, probably oily. If non-existent, probably normal. I'm looking for flaking, if I'm I need sorry. to do any extraction. So I'm looking for pore size and then how far down on the face they go. So like how close they are to the under eye area. So mine are closer to like the nostrils of my nose because I have oily skin. But they're closer up, then she probably has drier skin. But if you don't see them, they're probably normal. Yeah, pretty normal. Forehead, I'm touching also. I'm squeezing to see if she's dehydrated. So with the dehydration, everybody usually has lines in their forehead, right? So when you squeeze, you want to see if they stay after you squeeze. If they stay, they're dehydrated. If they go away, that's normal skin. I see I can do some extractions. So once I see that I can do, or she, there's some extractions, I always ask before I do them. So Jada's all right if I extract today? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go in with my second cleanse. This is liquid, but I would have preferred to do salicylic. And why is that? Because she has some extractions that I would want to do. Oh, skin type, she's probably, she is oily acneic. What does the salicylic do? Soften it? Yeah. I remember Ms. Reese telling me about the salicylic that Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you do salicylic, you're going to need a good moisturizer because it's going to dry it out. BHA. So your second cleanse is definitely when you're a little bit more rigorous. Because you're really trying to get that dirt and anything in the skin out. Don't forget around the hairline for hair products and stuff. A lot of people get bumps around there because they forget. And I always keep at least one hand on the client. So if I have to get more water, I'll keep one hand, grab water, and then I'll put it on and go back to what I'm doing. And then this is when I implement like three out of five manipulations. So here's Petrissage. <laughs> Effleurage, just to move some more product around. I can get with some friction also. And then I just move to the decollete. This is the caviar lime. Yeah, this is the caviar lime. And you're gonna fill.
So the way to keep it active is to keep it moist. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing wet gauze and steam. Still not covering the nose. So she'll sit for a little while. And at this point, I'll probably move the steamer so it's a little bit more on her, but I just didn't want to burn myself because I do that all the time. Now with this, like, with more patients and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure don't we need to be explaining to our clients, like, what is your, you know, these are new products that's going to be used for your skin and stuff like that, so there will be changes. You might, yes. you know, yes. dirt lifts to the surface. It might. Yes, okay. you'll purge. You might um, break out. Well, so people think breakout is purging, or purging is breaking out, but they'll purge. Like, if you're not, like, if you got somebody that just uses water or just Dove soap or uses just, like, CeraVe be or whatever, change. your body is going to go through a change to get rid of whatever it's not used to getting rid of. And it'll probably happen for in the first week. And then after that, it's going to be like, oh, okay, I got, I'm getting used to this type situation. Um, but, yeah, she'll explain to them, like, since this is... You know, like you said, new, being introduced to your body, you will go through a change of purging. Um, and that's just your body getting rid of toxins and waste through your skin. And they're like, oh, okay. I feel like that'll put in a lot of mm -hmm. confusion. Yeah, just, just communicate. All you gotta do is just communicate. Just like what I did with Jada, okay? Jada, you're gonna feel some tap dancing on your face when I apply this mask. That way she's not like, um, should it be tingling? Yeah, it's gonna tingle. That was it was a mask it is a mask but I use it as an exfoliant but yes it's to soften so for extractions because hopefully everything comes out like butter like butter like butter like butter yeah my little door thing yeah yeah the door thing should we use the lamp when we're doing this? yeah but the lamp's gonna get in my way so that's why I'm not using it so with the extraction tool and we'll all go over this individually but what you want to do is use this hoop part right here and press with that, not too hard, and then rock. That'll help get pressure on both sides of the comedome or whatever it is, pustule, so then it'll come out. You don't want to drag. You want to just press and rock, okay? okay. That just made me think of that lady on the video. Exactly. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And if it doesn't come out the first time, just shift your position. How are you feeling, Jada? You see it? Okay. You see it? I see it coming. I saw it coming out. Okay, I felt you flinch. You're good. I'm going to move. And it's good to pay attention to your client's body language. Because if they flinch, they about to reach up and grab you by the throat. That's the point to stop. But it's important to stretch the skin and then go in. <laughs> I'm sorry, your demo is just really, really good. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, well understanding. Yeah. We have some glasses which can help too, right? Yeah, if you have that, glasses, that glasses, they yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones that uh, like the dentist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the dentist glasses? That is some lights. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that one was good. I'm butterfly. I need my prescription in those. <laughs> that one was good. I like that one. That's a good image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Everybody gonna walk in my surgery. I thought you would use that to do my I know, I know. Give me like three more minutes. <laughs> I promise. <laughs>
three minutes. My ring light used to fall when people She got it. No, 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 I'm talking about extractions. Do you only really want to do extract? Well, kind of. You're pressing on inflamed. You're not inflamed, but you know, it's tight. Some of them are not ready, so I'm not even going to fight with them. Okay. But do you eat a lot of dairy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might want to cut that out because I'm seeing a lot of under the skin. And then the um, digestive area. Yeah. I've touched your face too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need to get like masks mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can we can you explain what you're talking about? So I was asking her about her diet because the placement of her acne mm -hmm. lets me know what's going on in her body. So, so here, because it's under the skin. So like these right here, that one, mm -hmm. and then that one, you see how it's under the skin, but there's no like white head or anything. Yeah. Let's me know that it has to be like, Dietary. Yeah, it's coming from underneath versus dirt is like on top. External factors. Yes. We learned so that. So I asked her, <laughs> you know, do you do you intake dairy? She said, yeah. Well, I know it's something that she's ingesting because it's here, right? So this is your intestines, liver, kidneys, all that stuff. I asked her, I said, you touch your face? She said, yeah, down here. If she said no, I would have been like, okay, what about is your cycle here? Because this is also menstrual. Almost. This oh. is almost. Right. Because so that's what this hormone right here is. Yep. And then yeah. if not, then that's digestive that's also comes here too. This up here is stress. Here is hair products. Mm. Usually mm. you don't clean your pillow at, or you don't switch your pillow during the week or anything like that. So I'm seeing what's going on. She's not too stressed, which is great. She might need to change her pillow a little bit more, or she's just neglecting this area from her hair product because she does have a protective style, so she has braids. I'm sure she puts oils and stuff in all the time, but that also runs down. So there's a lot of factors going on too. So she says she just switched her milk. That's great. So I would love to see what's going to happen in like six weeks when she her body gets used to her new milk. What's your new milk? Oh. Oat milk. You said oat milk? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oat and then what was your old milk? 2%. Okay, yeah. So I would yeah. love to see what her skin, how her skin reacts to the oat milk, and then also having a regular skin routine and possibly getting facials on a regular. Okay. What would make you say, do you drink a lot of dairy, or take um, eat a lot of dairy versus saying, do you eat a lot of fast food? Um, it's isolated. Fast food would probably be a little bit more clustered. Also, and then dairy, you drink milk on a regular, like every day. Yeah, I have a coffee yeah. every day. Yep. <laughs> and so that would just be, um, depending on if she did fast food, I probably wouldn't see it depending on when she ate it. So like, just like, you know, people say it takes like seven days for you to digest beef. And then on that seventh day, you know, you ate beef. Same thing with the skin. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to get into the massage. So I'm going to use vitamin, vitamin veil and a pump of aquaporin. Vitamin veil and then with the massage pen? Yeah, with aquaporin. Mm -hmm. No, I'm gonna do ma okay. massage then mask. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, so these I mean, are where all our steps are. Is that? Um, I still don't understand why the massage needs to be. <clears throat> is this not clogging her pores? No, because you take it off. You remove the massage afterwards. Yeah, because because it leaves but, like, it oily. But like you're massaging it in between. But also yeah. it helps like massage. I mean not massage, but relax the skin, relax mm -hmm. the muscles, get the circulation going, so then it can. The mask can penetrate deeper mm. so that's why some people do do massage after the mask because they feel like the massage will block the, the mask exactly, from going that's what I was it, it, I'm not saying that this is the seal, way but this the, is that's my exactly way because when you mix, mix oil with the cream it does create a certain type right of so that's what I'm saying some people do the mask 
before the massage. Yeah. And that's fine too. That's I, fine. I, I, yeah, that's fine. That's, but this is just the way that I know. Really open. So, like, for the mass to hydrate and penetrate your skin. Yeah. And then you just, like, finish with the massage. You can. So you can do either way. It's yeah, not wrong. you can do it. Yeah, okay. it's not wrong. But this is just the way that I learned how to do it. And state board? State board. I think it's either way. Either way is good? I think so. But um, we'll teach you massage then mass.
pumpkin mask and I'm gonna do three spritz of the lu uh, luxury licorice and burberry because this is a brightening spray brightening? Mm -hmm. and then this mask will help with brightening also so I'm gonna mix it together it's a licorice and burberry mm -hmm. mist mm -hmm. and it's for brightening and mm -hmm. then she mixed it with the pumpkin mask that also brightens so basically she's gonna look like a glazed donut <laughs> Hand and arm or neck and shoulder. Oh, do the neck and shoulder, please. Yeah. So I'm just trying to lift the neck. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Vitamin C, 
three sprays of licorice berry, burberry. And notice I'm spraying away from her. Yeah, I mixed the vitamin C with the um, licorice and burberry spread. 